Rapid in his third season at the helm in Tucson. 61 wins in his first two years. That's an NCAA record. For a coach in their first two years, he needs 29 wins to set the three-year mark. The ball is tipped and Arizona controls, and Kylan Boswell will get his turn at point. And, Matt, this is something that you talk to the fans here at Arizona. They're excited to see Boswell run the show. Yeah, so many new storylines, Jordan, already this season as Bella goes off early from the side. But I think one of them is Kylan ba Boswell. You know, Kirk Carissa had the helm there for a couple years, did a great job running the team, and now it's the keys are given to Kylan. Your officials tonight, Randy McCall, Glenn Mayberry, and Jason Gerritsen as that ball's knocked out of bounds. And Morgan State, they came into town last year. It was an eight-point game after the first half until Arizona pulled away. That game a couple days before Christmas last year. And a Morgan State team that will turn you over, try to push the pace, as they are not afraid to come in here and face a Goliath. Well, the one thing you see, and that's a deep jumper there from way back, Caleb Love with the rebound, but they have size and they can match up a little bit with this really big Arizona team. Love will fire from the outside, a little too strong. Boswell, offensive rebound. He'll tee up his three, and it's good. Now, so many times you see the offensive rebound converted for a three-point shot. Kylan Boswell right there, and kind of putting his stamp early on this season. Boswell, an excellent defender on the perimeter, and overall, just the defensive makeup of this Arizona team a lot stronger and deeper than it was last year. Yeah, really a lot more physical. Pella Larson taking what looks like a charge on that one. And I think that was the correct call. But I think you're right, Jordan. I think this, you know, I think they're stronger. They're bigger. They're more physical, more athletic. And one of those guys, one of the more athletic guys in this team, Pella Larson. And what's going to be interesting is just how deep this team will be. That was one of the issues for Arizona last year. It felt like as they got towards the end of the season, they were just running a little thin with injuries and maybe guys not developing quite on track as they were supposed to. Larson, he'll let a three go, and that is a splat from outside. Well, and you wonder how Pella was going to react to that. He's been hurt the last couple of weeks, did not play in the exhibition games, and comes out firing, takes the first shot, and then drains that three under. Heavy contested, too. Two made threes already for the Wildcats. Thompson will fire, and that is good. So Miles Thompson, who missed all of last year with the groin injury, still nursing it a little bit. Going to be a big part of the Bears' season this year. Balo spinning, finishing off the glass. Well, and you look at Balo, you think so much about the size and how strong he is. You know, one of the big seven-footers on this team, but... Look at the touch, the footwork inside. That looked like a 6-7 player. Johnson, the steal. That's going to be knocked out of bounds on Johnson as he was trying to control it. But already, you're just seeing the length and the versatility on defense that Keisha Johnson brings to the table. We'll get to Johnson in a second as we check out Kevin Brodus, head coach for Morgan State. His fifth season agreed to a two-year contract extension. It'll keep him there through 26-27, and he said you come into these games because you never know when you're going to get yourself in that NCAA tournament and be in a 16-1 to matchup. You need to have that experience of playing in one of these situations. As Tab is able to feather in the three, so as we said before, Morgan State, they will come out right at you. Yeah, and Coach Broda said Tabs is going to be, you know, how he goes is how we go, and that's a good sign there for Morgan State, an early long jumper made. Johnson trying to go off the glass with his right hand. Fouled, though, by Thompson. You see a little miscommunication on defense there. Boswell down, and, you know, we, we see this now, J.K. Everybody in college, no matter where you go, they can hit 25-footers, 26-footers. It's sort of the norm, and we've talked about it a lot the last, you know, five, six years, how that's changed the game, but not really anymore. I think we almost put it to bed. Guys making 27-footers. Keyshaw Johnson was one of the key off-season acquisitions for Arizona. When you look at just his frame, 6'7", 225, his experience playing in that national championship game with San Diego State, it's exactly what Arizona was missing last y year. Yeah, and if you know anything about Ma anybody that knows Mountain West basketball, great Dime there by Caleb Love. You see the unselfishness follow with the finish. But Mountain West basketball is scrappy, and they play tough. They may not be the best 
players like some of the pro guys in the Pac-12, but man, they play hard, and no one plays harder than San Diego State. Keyshawn was a big part of that. Another deflection that knocks it out of bounds, but how about Balo getting himself open here? Yeah, just hanging down by the rim when you're a big guy, that's going to happen. And love the unselfishness of love. You know, he's talked so much about a score. I mean, he can throw dimes. He'll give up the ball in big games, too. He, he wants to get his shot. Like I said, he's a natural scorer, but he's not afraid to play with his teammates. Here's Oliver, the seven-footer from East L.A. College, off the top of the backboard, quickly stolen. Hobbs sets his feet, knocks down the jumper. Kind of a dynamic duo at the point guard. Hobbs is really the leader of this team. Maybe not as big a score as Tabs is, but a good sign for both guards knocking shots in. Love the offensive rebound. Not shy about letting the three go, and this time it's rebounded by Tabs, but he loses it. Larson scoops it up. Love the drive, the scoop with the right. Well, and this is the thing you're going to see this year different from last year and that is a missed three but then get into the rim you know he'd missed a couple threes and what's he going to do next uses that frame the athleticism and he can get to the basket Arizona guards last year good players no question but they were not hunting rim shots and and that's really where I think Caleb Love separates separates himself is getting in the lane and trying to finish Oliver sticks the J and Morgan State four for their first six Follow prime real estate down low just a little too strong Tabs a long three off the screen gobbled up by Balo Pace is always something you have to keep in mind with Arizona They will love to look for their opportunities in transition as Larson is clobbered on his way to the cup some new faces feeling awfully comfortable here at McHale Center. It's Caleb Love, the former Tar Heel. Instruction from Coach Tommy Lloyd, but I could feel the runs coming. And we used to call it, you know, the, the run of death is what somebody labeled it here. You saw it over the years a lot, but coming from a guy, you played here, what, twice or three times? I played here four times. Four, four times, yeah, that's right. So you played, you played four times. What, what was that like? Like, how was it different than some other places? I think just for how long it lasts. That's the thing. Some places you're going to get a run for a couple buckets. You call timeout. The noise quells. Here it would just pick right up after the timeout. Your timeouts were useless here. <laughs> and if you didn't match Arizona bucket for bucket or with their energy, yeah, it just it would get buried. And so many teams have dealt with it. Do you remember your record here? Oh, I didn't win a game here. Now, <laughs> now, what's funny is I was bookended by victories for Oregon before right. and after I left, so I'm not going to yeah. say that's the common thread. But yeah. this is a Morgan State team that is not afraid to fire as Oliver gets the offensive rebound. Here's Hobbs, the runner off one leg, rolls out. Well, I can tell you Mac Court was as tough a place for me to play as any place in the Pac-12. Shrewd move by Larson as he draws the foul, and as he approaches the free throw line, you'll notice Jaden Bradley getting onto the floor for the first time, the transfer from Alabama. And his experience from Alabama, playing in the tournament, playing against that obviously very athletic SEC conference, it just provides more depth, Matt Mulebach, and you can't have enough bodies that have had experience, especially when you're trying to figure out your roster and rotation at this point. And for Tommy Lloyd, he said, listen, the beginning part of the season, we'll get to the schedule here in a moment, folks. It's very, very difficult. We're still figuring out how deep this bench is going to be, and it's going to be a little trial by fire and some testing going on here. Yeah, well, I mean, they've got to figure it out, but I, I love what you said about the athleticism, the strength of this team. They got they got some dogs. Yes. I mean, they went out. D-A-W-G-S. G-S, right? They went out and got some dogs that I don't think they really had last year, and, and and, you know, look at you said Keyshawn. You look at Jaden Bradley. You know, you know, Bradley started 22 games as a freshman on what was probably the best team in the nation for most of the of the year last year in Alabama. So you get those two guys. We're seeing K.J. Lewis just come in, the freshman. We'll talk about him. I'll tell you the other thing. Look at Caleb Love. Watch right now the defense and how they guard the ball at 30 feet and how much different that looks this year. Here's Lewis gets the deflection, and the freshman is off and running. Checked in the open floor, and what's fascinating too, Matt, about the additions, 
from what I glean talking to this coaching staff, it doesn't force any other player to really play out of position. You're not asking anybody to do some heavy lifting outside of what they're capable of doing. It allows guys like Pella Larson to play exactly the way that he wants to play. Yeah, no question. Continuity offense. Um, it's it's controlled chaos, if you will. It's chaos with structure. And I think all these guys, you look at players today, that's how players love to play. They want to get up and down. They want to run, but they do it with fundamentals. They do it the right way. Last foul was on Trent Edwards, and so that is six fouls for Morgan State in the first six minutes of this game, and that is something they struggle with. They average under 21 fouls per game last year, and See this block out of bounds right here, challenged well by Kieran Oliver. Twenty on the shot clock. Love pitter patter dribble. Wildcats working around. Here's Love up top, knocks down the tray. Well, and that play was really made by him because he created the 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 uh, the mismatch by getting in the lane. It broke down the defense. It got the ball got back to him, and I think. That's a great lesson for players that want to score. You do the right thing, you play the right way, the ball comes back, and we'll find you. Four assists on six made baskets, and here come the Wildcats running down the floor. Larson feathers it in with the left. He's got nine. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a big boy layup right there because he just used his size. Normally you go hard at the backboard, and that was a beautiful for them. He's he's coming off the bench, but he's in, in all effect, he is a starter on this team, the sixth starter. 9-0 run for the Wildcats, 22-10 advantage, their largest of the game. Now you watch here just the ball pressure. Bradley will start it up top. I was impressed with how love guard, then there you go. Lewis in passing lanes. Go at it. Throw Tops it up. with the turnover. Bradley up and under and scoops it in. Now, KJ Lewis, we haven't talked about him a lot yet, but this kid's going to be special. A really talented, aggressive, defensive minded freshman. And when talking to Tommy Lloyd about Lewis, he said he makes plays with his effort and energy as Bradley commits the foul that sends tops to the floor who gets the bucket and a chance for a three-point play now there he is after he'd gotten a steal great job on the break i thought he might throw it back up for the lob there jordan but it was it was a good decision <laughs> because they had a trailer coming down You're playing too much nba <laughs> <laughs> come on man you know it's, it's early it's, it's non-con let's yeah, throw well, that you know, up maybe you wait till the second well, half I, I was gonna say in the exhibition game they would have thrown yes. it up now, they had 24 turnovers the other night. What did Tommy Lloyd say? Good decision-making, and that was the simple, better decision than what probably I would have made. Well, you notice a little bit more size on the floor. We get our first look at Motiejas Krivas, the freshman from Lithuania. Did you say Seven a little two. more size? A I lot mean, more size. Holy, look at Listen, I was watching Wim Benyama the other day. He's not yes, quite that yes. tall, but still 7'2", and every bit of it. The dump off pass, Boswell, easy bucket. Well, nice penetration there by K.J. Lewis. He looks super comfortable out here for a freshman. I mean, he looks like he's played here three years. He was 14 for the Wildcats. Boss trying to defend on the block. Always a challenge for freshman big men. Definitely. And definitely having to step out in today's game, right? He gets pick and roll. You have four and five men. They're going to pull him out. They'll, they'll try to bring him out on the court. They'll try to get him in pick and roll like they did follow last year. But... He can move his feet pretty well for a big guy, and especially he's a legit 7'2". 260, so not necessarily the lightest frame either. So that last foul, foul was on Lewis. Second team foul for the Wildcats. Tops. No good on the jumper. Rebound to Lewis. And to your point there, they went right back to Krivas on that pick and roll. Krivas, and he was just collapsed on by this Morgan State defense and gets hit in the face. And... Rebus will draw the foul. So, the new additions blending in well with that fashion. Despite how well you play in the regular season, it all comes down to what happens in March. Well, and, and Tommy Lloyd called it, it's going to be the greatest gift of my coaching career. He, he said that was something that, hey, you don't want to go through. Everybody goes through it. But what it did is it really put a chip on his shoulder. It got him excited. It got him 
He, he, in fact, he said today, I said, what's the difference? Year three, you're sitting here at shoot around, you know, versus year one. And he didn't really, he didn't hesitate. He just said, I'm hungrier than ever. I mean, that was, that was what he's talking about. And that's a little bit of a reflection on that loss of Princeton. He also said, I was more prepared for this than I thought I was going to be. Don't forget, this is his first ever head coaching game after over 20 years as an assistant at Gonzaga. But then he also admitted, there's still so much more for me to learn as well, too. And he mentioned yeah. having conversations with Steve Kerr and guys that have been there before him or have done it at a high level that yeah. he's always trying to evolve, always trying to bring more to the table. And it has certainly shown in just the way this roster has been retooled as the boss hits a pair. Very intellectually curious guy. I mean, he's, like you said, spent some time with the USA basketball team this year. He was obviously is a boss. And Huey and Kerr and other guys and some incredible coaches. And Tabs driving, kicks it out. Oliver will let a three fly, and that finds the bottom of the net. Seven footer hit the threes. That's, again, the way the game has changed. It's just, and that's the part you mentioned. Go back to Freeman. That'll be what he'll have to do is coming out on big guys. Foul on the floor. That was Hobbs. The body blow. To Johnson as he was trying to find positioning, and now you've got Arizona in the bonus. Yeah, and, they, and they're going to take advantage because I think this physical team is going to go to the rim a lot this year. You know, as, as you see, going back to Tommy, it, you know, losing that game to Princeton, and I love what he did. He, he addressed it. He, he went after it. He, he wasn't shying away from it. And I remember, you know, I did a game here a few years ago, UNBC. University of Baltimore, or was it? Uh, University of Mal Maryland, Maryland, Baltimore, Baltimore County, County. Yep. right? And I talked to their coach before the game. He was Ryan Odom. I said, why'd you play this game? He said, well, we play this game because if we're ever going to get in the tournament, we're going to be a 16 seed, and we're going to play a one. And I want my guys to feel what it's like to play a one. And they ended up beating Virginia in that. That was the first 16 to ever beat a one. But the crazy part about that to me was Virginia then came back, what they do the next year. They won the national championship. So... I love what Tommy did and the way he's used it. I think it can be a big thing for them. Offensive foul on Keisha Johnson, lowering that shoulder. Okay, good defense there. Let me move your feet from Big Fella. fact, we love these game one. College basketball players can now wear the digits 6 through 9. And so the first ever 16 in Arizona history, Keisha Johnson. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then, so just to be clear, right, so they can wear anything, zero, double zero, or zero through 99. Yes. So one through 99. Yes. Okay. A lot of three flies. Rebound to Bradley. To the boy reaching in into the game for the first time for the Wildcats. What number were you? I was number two. Oh, oh, wow. So I was playing two sports at the time. They oh, all had a okay. deep thought going into that. <laughs> I like it. That's cool. Boswell bombs away for him as he makes his second three of the game. Well, and he's taking good shots. We called it earlier, the leadership. And I know it's early. I know this is way too early, Jordan, but I'm going with my gold standard comp of the year for Kylan Boswell. Go ahead. I got it. I've been thinking of, I didn't come up with this for a year. I finally came up with it. Fred Van Vliet. That's not a bad comp at all. Fred Van Vliet. And this is Fred Van Vliet right there. A little step back using the big frame. About He's Boswell's probably two inches bigger, but um, Van Vliet to me, an incredibly tough and well-rounded player. Nice handle by Boswell as he weaves through traffic. He's got eight points already for the Wildcats. Bradley, stop, pop. A little too strong. Comes Thomas trying to bring it down with the one on one against Borbich and in draws the foul. Going back to Boswell. Finished last year on a tear. His final six games shot 74% from the field, 65% from three, and was Pac 12 All Freshman Honorable Mention after back to back 14 point games to close out SC and UCLA last year. Yeah, he was balling at the end. You know, we, we almost made a joke about it in Tucson about how young he was all the time, but he then played on that under 19 USA team, which because he was so young, and he was one of the only guys on that team that had college experience. We'll reach it in, we'll hit the brakes. Boswell thought about it for a second. Leave us wide open. Leave us inside. He's known for his soft touch. Pumpy got it. How cool. He's going to be a great player. It's going to pay off for him this year. Works out every morning with Caleb Love. The two get their workouts in before class, and 
You just notice the chemistry being built already. Arizona up 19, rolling down the floor. Hey, we saw Boswell last year, a great player. You just mentioned the staff at the end of the year. But doesn't he just look more comfortable? It's effortless, and Johnson gets the slam, letting the traffic fly by. One other key point about Cody Boss. We've seen so much high-low action with Arizona. The skill of another complimentary big man alongside Ballo with the interior passing has really been key for the Wildcats. It, it is, and you watched last year. Tuvelis and Ballo had a special, you know, symbiosis, if you will. They, they were incredible together. You know, they. I think Tuvelis led the conference in assists as a four-man. Ballo led it as a five-man, so they, they really, really shared the ball. There's Oswell with that opportunity, Jay. And he shoots it with perfect rhythm, perfect backspin, but those big guys. I think it'll be interesting now to see. A big storyline to me is how does Ballo kind of share the ball this year with Keyshad and Krivas? How do they work together? Boswell, 11 points, 3 of 4 from 3. Arizona right now out-rebounding Morgan State 17 to 6. Just under 8 minutes left here in the first half. Could have shot that one, but you can see here he's trying to get others involved. Johnson, try a 3 from up top, pops around, Bohr beats it in, the pump fake goes through the contact to draw the foul. So timeout in Tucson, but the big man with the skill continues to stay. Internal development year after year has been the key for Tad Boyle. Tad Boyle, roll Tad. He's been there 14 years. The uh, dean of the Pac-12 along with Dane Alden oh, that's at Oregon. Both 14 years, but um, no, I, I think Colorado, as you said, I think they're going to be very good. They have Tristan Da Silva, one of the most underrated players in the country. He's a fantastic 3-4, plays every position. Simpson can light it up. And uh, they've got a terrific what, McDonald's All-American freshman, I believe, there. So they, they got some they got some guys. The Corey Williams, top 10 Cody pick, Williams, is what right. they're saying right, right now. Great yep. size. And seeing if the pieces can come together there. But right now it's Arizona, a 23-point lead. A 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Morgan State has shot just one free throw this game. Follow back in the game. Here's Thompson from outside, and Thompson with the silky smooth stroke. Yeah, that was nice again. Big fellas taking it out, shooting, and Arizona, Arizona's got to respect that that jumper with all their bigs. That's something they're going to have to deal with this year. Five points for Miles Thompson. Love stepping through the lane, dishes it out. Bora Beach and then can't get it. Good look though. Follow <laughs> will just go ahead and hammer that one out of bounds. Follow <laughs> hit that. Literally about 10 rows up, if not more. And then a fan tried to throw it back onto the court, and it hit one of the assistant coaches from Morgan State on the back of the head. Yeah, follow through. Yeah. Mr. Up there in the white hat. I follow is strong. You know, I, I asked the uh, strength and conditioning coach, Chris Rounds. I was, like, watch, asking those guys, like, when no one's watching, who works the best? Like, who's the guy, like, first name that came out? Follow. Umar Bala. I and mean, you saw it last year because that yeah. was the biggest improvement for him was his conditioning as you yeah. have a foul about 35 feet away from the basket. Caleb Love caught reaching in. Well, and that's the biggest reason. He went from 15 minutes two years ago to 28 minutes last year. I thought that was more impressive than his points. The points came because of the minutes and him getting in shape. And to follow up on the round story, he literally listed the top five, uh, the starting five. So, when you, and he doesn't do that very often. He's a very direct guy, and he, that's that's a good sign for this team. Fouls on Polyus Morauskas, his first appearance on the floor. And how about our Nextiva Performance Award? This Pac-12 Basketball Performance Award is presented by Nextiva. And Umar Balo, most improved. You see the huge leap in scoring as well as just what he was able to do all the other categories. Yeah, rebounded the ball very well. and We talked about just playing the game the right way with Tudelis. Another deep one. Miles Thompson. They are so happy to have him back in the lineup. Missed all of last year, the redshirt senior from Camden, New Jersey. Back-to-back -back buckets. Kind of feels like he's the key to their team as well, playing that force. Open look for Moraskis. No good, but it's Love who gets the offensive rebound. Muscles it up and draws the foul. Caleb Love goes to the offensive glass. Another 
I think just another consequence of being big, strong, and athletic for a two guard getting offensive boards. Ninth offensive rebound for Arizona. And when you've got these big athletic guards just creating extra possessions, and that's the thing Tommy Lloyd said. It feels like every guy is playing hard, playing with tremendous effort. And, you know, this, if, if you're a coach, that's priority number one before you get to anything else. Yeah, 100%. It's a, what are the things you can control? Effort, attitude, um, how you treat your teammates. And, you know, Tommy Lloyd's talked so much about culture, and every coach has to now. J.K., I mean, you know this with when we played – you know, Tommy Lloyd now has to deal with how many new guys every year. It's not like it's not like a system no. where we played where you knew what was going to happen. And the, the, those juniors could help the freshmen in the sophomores. So maybe three, four newcomers most every year. Most. Now coaches are dealing with seven, eight, nine from Oregon State. Fourteen newcomers, and that is beat off the glass. But ruled a goaltend. It was Balo and Morauskas that were both challenging. It. I think that hit glass first. That looked like a good call. Let's see if. Morales gets get it after the glass. Yeah, hit Ballo the glass. might have hit that before. You think he tipped it before? So some fans are politely telling the officials. I'm interested to see this Morales kid play. He's looked good to me in the exhibition games. Just a a natural player, natural scorer. Like in my mind, he's a guy that can come in and like surprise people and get a few buckets without even you know, just very natural. <laughs> Closes the lid. Offensive put back in. Offensive rebound number 10 for Arizona. Well, I, I know I'm being redundant on this, Jordan, but guard penetration. You're going to see so much more of it this year. That's the reason Balo had that look, was because Boswell got in the lane. Deflected by Balo. Love and transition. A little string music from outside. And what happens when you get in? Side? Then it opens up the outside. This is a very balanced basketball team Arizona 10 assists on 14 made baskets love with 10 points Boswell with 11 Larson with nine just over five minutes left in the first half Arizona really starting to distance themselves up 22 here's Edwards the drive tries to put the jumper up can't chase it Larson piloting the drive Larson tries to sky high but slapped on the wrist He'll head to the free throw line as the foul is whistled against Kieran Oliver. Now there's the penetration by Boswell. Misses that layup and follow there to finish. And that's what happens. Now Caleb, again, he, he is an electric scorer. I mentioned prolific scorer, but he's just an electric player. And I love, I love the emotion after that as well. Larson now the third Wildcat in double figures here in the first half. And... Going back to Love, 1,500 total points, essentially, in his years at North Carolina. Eighth most made three-point field goals, made 200 of them when he was with the Tar Heels. Well, and you do the math on 1,500 points. He has another year like he's been having. He would be probably number three all-time in Arizona scoring in the 2,000-point club behind Sean Elliott and Bobby. I was going to say, some of the names that are crazy. up there. Yes, really great company. Largest lead of the game for Arizona. Here's Love trying to get on the floor, but scooped up by Tabs. His teammate able to come and help him out. Oregon State, a little out of control, but they'll try to rebalance things. Short got on the three. It felt like Love got a hand on that. Ballo slaps it away, but draws the foul as Thompson was going up. Well, that was... The, that... that. <laughs> So sixth team foul against the Wildcats. Make that the seventh team foul now for Balo, his first personal. So Miles Thompson will head to the line, misses the first. Well, there's last year, Jordan. You look at the free throws attempted. Look at the difference between Ramey Creesa, Bradley and Love. 250. I mean, they're shooting 153 more free throws. And then look at the three-pointer and the attempts. I mean, that's because Love and Bradley are getting to the rim and shooting three-pointers. And so. as you mentioned, guard penetration can open up so many things in offense for you versus 
maybe a three from the outside or contested three you're not leaving yourself too many options on that that's right and the, and the balance there was is the key and I, you know look the guards last year for Arizona were very good guards they had some incredible games right a top five team at time because of those guards but it's just a different look at the look this year shot clock at three first time Arizona has been under duress offensively love has to force it up nice defensive stand for Morgan State to the four-minute mark here in the first half. Opening game of the season for Arizona, ranked number 12 coming in. Boswell, the rebound. Boswell running, dumps it off. Larson tries to sneak it in, and he does. Well, and you see what Boswell did, how he got leverage on the one defender. Once he got his shoulder in there, then he was able to make it a two-on-one instead of a two-on-two, -two, and that opened Pella Larson for the layup. 11th assist of the game for the Wildcats shooting 50% 15 of 30 from the field You football guy like my use of leverage in basketball like yeah. outside leverage inside yes. leverage really important there I know you oh, know wow. your football there Mulebach is Balo tries to go up bothered and another defensive stop for the Bears Here's Thompson he's been the leading scorer and he will just bulldoze Larson. Larson takes his second charge of the game. Yeah. So Kylan Boswell starring at point guard. This you bring in, you have six guys come back. That's pretty good. It's a good core of guys. You have seven new players. Three of them you just mentioned were the transfers and four freshmen. So you're building the core, you're building freshmen, but then you bring in some studs that are going to inject some life and energy into the program. It is that really nice balance where you feel like the well isn't dry in any particular year. Real quick, you saw the 63 points right before half. It was ruled the clock started late, so the officials went to the monitor, used the old-school stopwatch, and determined that the shot did not go in before time should have ran out so thus Arizona has 61 instead of 63 there you go dot the eyes cross the tees that's right and look at here Arizona I, I want to see them this half what's their concentration level we watched in the first half what only three turnovers that was a key for them they had so many in the exhibition game they cleaned that up do they do it again in the second half and you know right away they give up a lane so I think it's easy to lose concentration when you're up by this let's see what they can do for 20 minutes now you imagine they want to end this game on a good note knowing that you're hopping on a plane in a couple days and headed to Duke on the road is Ballo strong finish with the left hand well, and they didn't elect to double, and that's going to be interesting this year because if you don't double Balo, I think he's going to have his way. But who do you double with? Because there's a lot of guys on this team that can kill you on their, on, from the outside. Taps his three is no good. Flying high for the rebound was Cameron Hobbs. He's dislodged in mid-air. And a foul against... Arizona. Well, how about Colorado wow. defeating LSU 92 to 78? Yeah, can't see me now. 27 points for Frida Foreman, 9 of 15, bombed seven threes, five rebounds, five assists. Well, she didn't show the ring, but she did good to can't see me now. Is that yeah, that's what I'm saying? Hey, like if you're gonna talk it, you got to take, take it. That's it what I say. Year. So People how about the coming. Buffaloes? Yeah. People are coming at it. And it, I mean, just men's and women. Oh, basketball great. this year. So many great storylines that yeah. to make for a terrific season. Well, last year's women's final four was that there's never been anything, anything like it. Johnson coast to coast with the lay in. Well, we saw that a lot last year with Tubelis and the court better than any big man in the country. But Johnson's doing a great job. And I think you know, kind of some renewed energy here. He had a great team. Look, they were in the finals last year. I mean, San Diego State's an awesome program, but I think just something a little different for him, a little change of pace in terms of playing a little faster, and his numbers are going to go up. Larson up top. Johnson can't come down with it. Good idea, though, by Pella Larson. Morgan State will race it back down the other way. The flip shot is good. Amari Simpkins get the bucket. Nice runner right there in the floater. Part of that's chemistry. You're just learning where to throw the ball on lobs, when to time it up. It's a feel thing when you get into the actual pace of games, I imagine. Absolutely. The lob one, too, as you know, like, that's a hard, that's, so many guys make it easy. It, it's not as easy as it looks all the time. Now, when you're throwing it to certain guys, it can 
jump 44 inch vertical like yourself. Oh, I mean, you know, a little easier, but you must have me confused for somebody else, my friend. <laughs> no, you had you had some ups. You had some major ups. Stolen oh, by Larson. Speaking, speaking Larson ups. out and running, and Larson will lay it in. I think he got a little bit. The, the defender was on his felt the presence, and, and he didn't want to yeah. go up and then come down awkwardly because Larson can fly. Oh, a little Ooh, poked away by Boswell. Boswell with the finish. So oh, the defensive clamps. By Kylan Boswell. But by the way, you don't poke it away if you go back on the other side of half court and play soft defense. He's covering it 92 feet right now. Sprinting ahead is Hobbs. He'll try the runner. Ballo just rips it away. Boswell keeping an eye on Love. Skips a pass. Love. I think he was surprised he was even able to get the ball there. Wow. The left-handed sort of... Is it like a Larry Bird half court down below like that? Little English that on it as well, too. All cats ball on the baseline. Love back to Boswell. Boswell, that smooth jumper is cooking tonight for Kylan Boswell. And it's kind of a rhythm jump shot because you throw it in as the under out of bounds guy. I did that a lot when I played. And you can run off that little screen or a little step back. They don't think you're going to get the ball. Sometimes the most dangerous guy is the guy taking it out of bounds. Solid years, but it might be a blowout, blow up year for him. I mean, he could really become an all Pac-12 player this year. All five starters and double figures, efficient scoring as well. And we said it's so important to have the pieces around Appella Larson to where you aren't asking him to play out of himself as ball of the steal. Are you kidding? Oh, heavyweight flight. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was a 787 taken off for flight right there. Well, well the, Barbalo. He's going to do it again. Boswell oh, getting on the floor, skinning up the elbows. Oh, Johnson oh. ripped away, though. Good D. That was Not broken up that. by Tubbs. I, I mean, this is this is spectacular. Look at the footwork here, the quickness, and then going off outside the, the restricted area. Woo! How about the synchronized leap by both Boswell and Johnson right there? That, that, that was a couple years ago. That's what Arizona used to do. They used to have the fun on the dunks. I think maybe that was last year. That was great. Great skill work by Ballo. That tells you a lot about why he's so good down low. A big man able to do that at that size. So Johnson, Boswell, Ballo, and Larson all head to the bench for a round of applause. And Rivas couldn't get the slam, and then he'll come down and a foul on the other end against the Wildcats. As now you're going to give your bench some opportunities here. We'll step aside, but Umar Balo, we've talked about it. So interesting because you look at the history of Arizona basketball. It's so well respected with all the alumnus as well, too. Everybody just has such an appreciation. And you were saying on the road for Arizona when they took their trip overseas this year, Tommy Lloyd really wanted to give each guy an opportunity to learn more about the lore and the history and just to appreciate what Arizona basketball is and how special it is. Well, he was trying to tap in like we all talk about into the culture right into the chemistry of this team how does he how does he build culture this fast you know you bring in all these new guys you gotta go play duke in four days but one of the ways he did that when they went to israel he put together kind of a, a, a sports information direction director for them um pamphlet for them that had a journal for them to write about their trip but also had a bunch of fun facts of ex-players um, you know pictures of, uh, of older players and he said he's really trying to incorporate the, the history and the knowledge to give this team hey this is you guys are here now and it's all about you but this is where you came from and that's the thing for players that come here they walk these hallways they see the names up in the rafters and really the most dominant program in the west alongside UCLA if you look over the last 25 30 years and obviously Gonzaga's right up there but just Arizona basketball something different that has uh, been built here over yeah, the you, years. You, well, you call it a special place and it is and you know you don't have to look much further the red blue game which has become a celebration here in Tucson and what Tommy does to bring in Richard Jefferson and Channing Fry and 
you know, it's 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 a, an event. It is a, it's an, an unbelievable event, and I didn't even mention Miles Simon and Mike Bibby and Andre Iguodala, and goes on and on. Steve Kerr and Luke Walton on the Zoom. You know, it was it's a pretty cool deal, and I think that makes these players feel, you know, just the love, the history, and the love from the fans. KJ Lewis poked that ball away off the foot of Morgan State, so that'll be Arizona ball and. I think again when you understand just the gravity of the great players that have played here How do you not want to get into the gym and work hard and try and get to that next level as love tries to go up and under Krivas tries to muscle it in and game one. We got our first wedgie <laughs> Krivas did a nice job there. He's gotten a couple shots blocked below the shoulders guys have come in the smaller guys He kept that ball higher and then the only thing they could do was foul him so Great job by him kind of learning on those. Average 13 points, 9.7 rebounds, two and a half blocks for Lithuania at the FIBA Under-20 European Championships. Had three double-doubles, but seven feet tall. Make that 7'2", 260. The number two recruit in Lithuania, whereas Marauskas was the number one recruit. In, and there you have it, the who's who of... Pac-12 royalty here at Arizona over the last decade plus. Yeah, and that thing just goes on forever. Aaron Gordon just won a world championship with the Nuggets. We talked about Iguodala retiring this year, and Chase Buttinger. And Chase Buttinger is an yeah. unbelievable volleyball player right now on the AVP tour. Really? Yeah, he's. I think he's one of the top five players. Okay. Had a great pro career as well in the NBA. A funny story about him. I remember Lute Olson telling me when he was recruiting Chase that he's the most excited player he'd ever watched. He was, <laughs> he was so pumped on Chase Bunning. I'll never forget that. Yeah, it's amazing the legacy, of course, Lute Olson set here as Tops able to stick the jumper here from Morgan State. And really just all the fans around here, their appreciation for the history. And... How no matter who they play, they are filling this arena up. They are bringing the juice, bringing the energy. And that's what makes every game certainly an event here. Well, I remember, too, uh, your dad, Ernie Kent, and Luke were, had a great relationship. And they they had at the time, when you think of those Oregon-Arizona teams, they had the apps. It was a track meet. Yes. I mean, you ran track as well. But I did. It was a track meet for basketball. It was some of the most fun basketball you could watch in the country at that time. Christian Oliver with another three, his second of the game. He's got nine points to lead all scores for Morgan State. Check out Krivas down on the block, trying to work against Oliver. Flips it in, can't get the bucket. Morgan State will bring it back down. Yeah, you know, one thing Krivas will have to learn, I just kind of alluded to it earlier, now coming out on Oliver again. Oliver can flat out shoot. Good for him knocking that in, but... Krivas has to learn because everybody's smaller than him. Everybody. I mean, Oliver's a seven-footer and he's smaller. But he has to learn to play against smaller guys. It's not easy sometimes for a big man to do that. Lewis comes barreling in, up and under to get the bucket and the harm and a chance to make it a three-point play. And again, you look at another talented freshman that isn't built like a freshman. Not at all. KJ Lewis looks like... You, we just saw that video of me. It looks like I wanted to look my senior year. <laughs> and I didn't look like that. But, no, he's, you know, and Texas kid, right? A lot of Texas kids, football, football country, they yep. come in looking like they could play, you know, DB or running back. That's what he looks like. Well, it's interesting. Lewis, when he was 10 years old, drew a picture of him in an Arizona jersey as he had some tip to the bill there. Yeah, I asked him, you know, being around this program, knowing Tucson, his dad's here, Kenyon, in Tucson. I've known his dad for a long time, had a really good daughter, was a volleyball player. And I said, what's it like? And he just said, man, it's just, it's surreal. I'm sitting here and it's happening. I'm, I'm actually here. And I've dreamed of this. And I, he's just like, I, he really like paused and, and kind of and took it all in. Great thing is he can enjoy his son here at Arizona for a handful of years and things continue to go well for him in the direction that he hopes it will. Absolutely. But the ability to bring in a freshman and have him contribute right away along with the transfers as this is going to be a foul against Marauskas. It's huge because now you've got more depth and more options and these players again when you look at the schedule that they're getting ready to face 
they are going to be battle tested early on. It, it's not a cupcake schedule, and all of a sudden things ramp up as you're preparing for Pac-12 tournament, NCAA tournament. You are going to play some big time teams early in the season. Well, and I think I guess I'd be remiss in not pointing out. I, I agree with you 100. percent Those guys are those guys on the bench right now. They're going to be get ready because because they're going to have a lot of battles in the next month or two. But I would even add to that. I think the Pac-12 is going to be excellent this year. And I'm not just saying that, you know, we say it, don't, you know, start of the year, ah, Pac-12 is going to be pretty. I, no, they have a lot of good teams in the conference. I think they have nine teams that have a chance of making the tournament. Now, I'm not saying all nine will make it, but I think they have nine teams that legitimately today can tip it up and say we could make the tournament. For beaching it. Able to get the hoop and the harm, so he'll step to the line for one more. Well, Philip Borovichin, who I like to affectionately call Philly B. Philly B, you know, where he was from was a playmaker. You know, they, they was kind of thought of himself and his teammates and all that, call him the Magic Johnson, because he, he could do everything. Really skilled big man. He's almost 6'9", has a ton of size. But for this team, Tommy Lloyd wants him to be a shooter, wants him to make shots. Now, he can get inside because of the size, but I think he's going to help this team this year with that jump shot. Well, Arizona has players from Lithuania, Estonia, Mali, Sweden, Spain, and Serbia, and just culturally getting your players on the same page, that's a task. It but is. it's something Tommy Lloyd and his staff have always done well. They've recruited Europe very strongly and implemented these players not only to, into this country, but into this team. I agree. And then they have coaches from Italy. They have coaches from Poland. I mean, it's it's incredible. United Nations of a team. You see the bounce from Lewis, who won the slam dunk contest amongst the team the other night, throwing it down over Umar Balo, and the lead has now been extended to 48 with just under 12 minutes left in this game. Arizona for this game. Nice back to shooting 54.7 percent, 29 of 53 is. We have another foul against the Wildcats, but KJ Lewis, the youth movement in full form. Oh, you know, typically, as we would do, you go on the road. You have a different roommate a lot of times on the road than you might have, you know, at at home. And you might actually not even live with a basketball player. But what they did is they changed roommates every single hotel they went to so they stopped somewhere for a day or two had a roommate they went somewhere else and changed it up and they did that every single time out which i thought was fascinating but another area again tommy lloyd trying to you know encourage culture create culture work on the culture and and the players said almost to a man that one of the greatest things of the whole trip was that one fact Especially when you look at all the different backgrounds that everybody's yeah. coming from. Just an opportunity to really learn more about your teammates and learn more about yourself as Conrad Martinez is in the game for the first time. Borovicinin can't knock down the tray. Bradley picks up his dribble. Martinez thought about it, dishes it. Another clean look on the outside. Borovicinin still out, can't get it. Here's Johnson, just wow. the physical force down low wow. that he is. You were seeing it here tonight. Johnson picking up his eighth rebound another offensive rebound for Arizona and what he did down low it wasn't just the upper body right there man when he got the legs into it and who just cleared out a couple guys that was impressive who did, how, how, when you went on the road did you guys room who set that up did the coaches set it up coaches did and it, we changed it up quite a bit sometimes but yeah. I think for the most part everybody kind of roomed with the same three four guys for the yeah. most part um, who'd you room with the most Luke Jackson a couple times and then another teammate of mine that came in the same time as me Adam Zahn we would always room together for the yeah. Pac-12 tournaments and that, those were special times you know you get a yeah. chance just to learn more about your teammate and things kind of slow down and yeah that's why I think when you're already rooming with someone else that's impactful but now yeah. you're out of the country doing it yeah so no. er everything's completely different and yeah it, i think it's a sign of maturity for these guys to be able to have these conversations and relationships with one another at a time where let's be honest matt here we are sitting in our rocking chairs on our front porch <laughs> phones and social media right it makes it that much right. easier to be isolated but Bradley right there almost making the bucket in isolation. Well, to your point, I roomed my sophomore year, I roomed with Kenny Lofton. Didn't room with him here in Tucson, but roomed with him on the road. And, you know, Kenny was such a great kid, and he came from a really big family that was raised by his grandmother. Grandmother was legally blind and raised 12 kids. 
And, you know, just being there with Kenny, learning about his background, he oftentimes did not have family members at the games. So my mom would bring him cookies and things like that. And he became like, like best friends with my parents and still talks to him today. Incredible. It's just, and so you get those experiences and, uh, I, I know that's happening right here. I met, met a couple of the moms here today. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb loves mom, Alicia, from, actually from Kansas City. What a wonderful, wonderful woman. Played basketball at Southwest High School in Kansas City and met Kashad's mom, Kishad's mom, and she was great, Rochelle. Just terrific, terrific families. And I'm sure they're thrilled just to see their sons in an environment like this where you have crowds like you have, the team's playing well, everyone's getting along so far, and you know, it could be something special as Boswell back in the game gets the offensive put back to go in. Strong, man. He's just and knows how to play. And it's interesting, you might look at this score and figure Arizona is up 48 right now. Why are your starters in the game? You've got to get game conditioning in as you get set to take on Duke. Yeah, I think that's a great point. They don't have time to kind of slowly work into this. Not a, it's not a slow boil. It's like get this thing heated up, you know, 0 to 100 right now. You see Boswell with 18 points. That's a new career high for him. His career high was 15 coming into the night. And it continues that trend of how well he finished the season last year. Back-to-back 14-point -back games and matchups against UCLA and USC as Johnson. Nice dime for Borovic and then able to get the finish. Just talk about teams like how many guys can score 20 or plus on a given night. Because sometimes you look at teams, they might have two, three guys. It's not, and, and I think that hurts when you don't have that balance. Nice run to the rim right there and dish. But I think this Arizona team, I really look around, I mean, gosh, I, I think they got six, seven guys that could score 20 plus. Udamato getting the put back for Morgan State. Borovic in and a beautiful fake and a finish. Now the three ball not going down for him. He He's going to make a lot of those corner threes, missed a couple of them, but if it's not working, do the right thing, get to the rim. Seven points, but as you said, 0 of 4 from outside. Tops tries to sneak it in, draws the foul, sent to the floor. A little up fake right there. You know, everybody talks about Steph Curry and the threes and how deep. I think one of the things the under talked about, the impact he's had on basketball, is the shot fake. Because I think about how much he shot fakes, and, and just he has five different varieties of shot fakes. And I watch guys now copying those shot fakes. It used to be the old, like, you know, go to two feet, kind of the, you had to, like, really sell it, you know. <laughs> you're, you're selling it from low to high. And now that one was just like the little head, it was just a little head movement right there. But I see so many guys doing that in, in the game. And it's, it's such an incredible, incredible move. It is funny how some of the simple fundamentals are still the most effective in this game despite all the evolutions of it over the years. So now we see Borvichin and Boswell and Johnson head to the bench, potentially their last time on the floor this evening as Rauskis, Krivas, Bradley, Martinez, and Lewis on the floor for the Wildcats. Man, Krivas can set some screens. He can get guys open. Bradley dumps it off. Krivas, beautiful two-man game. And that's how you get yourself open, too. You set a good screen, you're going to get open. How about this Wildcat defense tonight? 15 steals, the most by Arizona since they had 15 against Long Beach State on November 24th, 2019. 23 turnovers for Morgan State so far, but another outside shot for Miles Thompson, and you see why they're so happy to have him back in the lineup for the Bears. And I love, I love that stroke he has. It kind of fade away, gives you that little touch, creates more touch when you do that. He really shoots it well. Miles gets the chance to back things down and a flop clearly by Morgan State as he's able to finish through the theatrics. Yeah, good, good call by Eugene. That was clearly a flop. And I think the refs 
give them some credit here. They've done a lot better job the last couple of years. They've really gotten that out of the game. It's not not 100 percent, but they've gotten it out a lot better in the last year or so. It's a good point you make. It felt like last year there was such an emphasis to really whistle it. And yep. you like sometimes just to let them play through. Bradley's just gonna keep it himself as Bradley with the smash attack. Wow. That we talk about some ups. I mean, you know, he's six two, six three, but that was that was impressive and strong too. Jaden Bradley, the sophomore transfer from Alabama, showing the athleticism points. The 61 first half points the most since 1998 and some other numbers that jump out at you Matt Mubach Coming into this game Morgan State last year number two in the nation and forcing just under 19 turnovers per game Arizona tonight just five turnovers Tabs can't get it to go a couple of big bodies in his way as Morauskas Shows off his ball handling as he takes it coast to coast Martinez baseline drive Excellent ball movement by the newest additions for the Wildcats as Morauskas drills the three. Now we just talked about shot fakes, and there's a great one by Morauskas, and you see the stroke from the outside as well. It, he's a talented player. I'm, I'm really excited to see him play some more minutes. Well, how about the freshman boss that they have right now? Lewis, Rivas, Morauskas. Don't forget, Boswell's just a sophomore. Yep. Bradley, just a sophomore. Yep. Well, it's... And then out for Tabs. Krivas running the floor and he gets tripped up. Yeah, that's that's probably not the pass. I think Philly B after he you know he looked at it, he's wide open, but probably not the pass you want to get to your seven two guys. And he knows that came over and helped him up and all his fun. Yeah, it did go down a little awkwardly as He's up and just checking the joints and making sure the alignment's right. But anytime you're seven two and you fall, you just that is a long <laughs> a ways lot. down. Arizona twenty four of twenty eight for the free throw line, and what looks nice is his touch from the foul line. Also, I was I had not seen him shoot a free throw. That was that looked good. I guess my question to you is. It's no secret that there's international players. When you look at the number of international players in the NBA right now, what has been Arizona's competitive advantage to be able to go to Lithuania and find this type of talent, get the number one and number two guy, when every program in the country is looking to add talent no matter where it comes from? Well, I, I think it's two things. One, Tommy Lloyd's been doing this for 20 years. That's one of the advantages that he created at Gonzaga, so he knows he knows that world as well as anyone. Now, some of the other guys do too. However, what you said earlier is it's a program where they love having a nice move at the rim right there by Oliver. But it's a program that accepts it, that loves it, that incorporates it into what they do. So you feel comfortable if you're from overseas. Or Beachinen trying to feed it into Krivas. He tries to rip it away. Oliver tight roping the baseline, able to save it. Well, I mean, check out Krivas right now. He's playing with another player from Lithuania. How many programs have two high level players that get to play together? And by the way, as Julius Tubelis as well, too, was that's right. From and, Lithuania. Yeah, they, so it helps when you yep. see him have success here. That's a great point. Yep. Or Beachinen getting the bucket, by the way. 108 last year. The Wildcats dropped 117 on Nickel State in the season opener. So, under five minutes, eight points that. away. Grivas bothers it. Borovicinin throws it down the floor. Martinez, beautiful catch. Has to slow it down, though. Morauskas thought about it. Fifteen to shoot, plenty of time. Martinez gets it to Lewis, the freshman from outside, rattles it home. Well, I think sometimes you get a guy like KJ Lewis. He's such a great athlete. He's such a good rim runner. He can dunk. I mean, he won the dunk contest. People sometimes assume, oh, are you a good shooter? And that's not really his thing because he does the other so well. But you can see right there, he can shoot it. Not a problem for him. It's still early in the season, clearly, but when your bench unit can come in 
and impose the will the way that they have been right now. It's got to be promising. Martinez wants to join the party. Or beats it in. Offensive rebound blocked. Or beats it in. Still fighting for it. Flips it in. Billy B. Putting some time in. I'll tell you right now, that 117 is toast. <laughs> it that is 117 toast. is toast at this point. Have no bot. Might have to start looking at 120 possibly. No, that's a that's a normal NBA game these days. Nice move. Drive is good for Simpkins. It's called the glue guy for Morgan State. Just does everything that they need him to do. Rouskis will lower the shoulder, and that should be a charge, and it is. So we will step away for the final media timeout. But you know what? Wildcats and their fans, they're eating good right now. They got a hundred of the year this year. St. Francis taking on UCLA and Washington and Keon Brooks getting their season opener as well, too. It's part of our tip-off weekend here. And just that our guy Eldridge or Kazner doing that game up in Washington? Eldridge, yes. Eldridge is doing that one. Eldridge always fired up for his Huskies. He loves his Huskies. And the slam as nobody was there to stop it. For Kieran Oliver. Oliver, his second bucket of the game. Well, I like Coach Broda standing up over there for Morgan State. He's still coaching these guys. He knows the score doesn't really matter. It's all about just getting this team better for their season. Grant Whiteman from Tucson into the game. Ball pried loose as he's driving towards the lane, and it'll be Arizona ball as the officials have a disagreement, but ultimately give it to the Wildcats. Also into the game, Luke Champion. So Morgan State, located in Baltimore, 9,000 enrollment. Notable alumni, Monique, she was an Oscar winner, by the way. Willie Lanier, Joe Black, and you know, we were talking with Coach Kevin Brodus and you know, his playing background and just really what it meant for him to lead this team. He feels like his guys have really developed well over the summer. They went on a trip to France in August. And, you know, he said in these games, sometimes the talent will kick in at some point, but you just have to survive and weather the runs. But last year, this is a team that got to 4 0 in conference play, and that's when the injuries really hit them. And they're trying to shake off two straight losing seasons where they were just one game below 500. Well, well this game will help them no matter what. Like I said, score doesn't matter. But I just enjoyed talking to him. Jordan, you know, you, you see these coaches. You know, he's not coaching a high-profile, you know, Arizona top 12 team, but I mean, they are like CEOs. They're, they're every one of them, almost to a person, is so impressive. And he's he was really impressive just talking to him for 10 minutes. Just over two minutes left. 117 points in their season opener last year against Nichols State. That is the number to beat for the crew on the court right now. Martinez did it. Catch and shoot three is money. I said the fans are going to love this guy. Martinez, look at him hustling right there. This guy can hustle. He can play. He has, he has no fear. Absolute confidence for a freshman. So the 116 most points for Arizona in a game since 117 versus Nickel State last year. And this is playing. I mean, number one, Belmont, they might win their league. So you look at that game right there, a really good game for them. Um, trying to think of some of the other teams they play. Obviously, Florida Atlantic is the Owls. Fifth. I mean, hoot, hoot, baby. Colgate, that's the other team. Yes. They might win their league. By the way, I can't let it drop that we saw Willie Lanier, Morgan State alum, former Kansas City Chief, mm -hmm. all-pro linebacker for the Chiefs. Another three. So that is nailed by Grant Whiteman, the Tucson native, and now Arizona, the most points in a game since 1998, when they dropped 126 against Arizona State. Well, Grant Whiteman, okay, he has scored. He's a very good walk-on, by the way. Coming again right at you for another one. Whiteman, a little switcheroo with the hands. Can't get it. These guys will let it fly. As Morowskis fouled on the drive. And free throws coming. That'll inch closer to that 126 mark. Well, Whiteman, as I said, good player. Very good player. He's actually improved a lot. I've watched him 
since he's been a freshman here. You look at him as a senior, has scored as a walk-on, but has not hit a three. So that was his first three as a Wildcat. So congratulations, Grant Whiteman. Free throw's no good. So foul against the Wildcats on the free throw. And okay, now the transition changes to Duke. And you pivot from a couple of exhibition games. You're up 119 to 56, 63 point lead. What's the conversation like? How do you flip that switch if you're Arizona when you have such a difference in pedigree of opponent here? You know, that, that's one of those games that's cool. I don't think you have to say anything. You just know it. You know it's Duke. Tommy Lloyd, the, the cat, Coach Rob there, Jack Murphy. Look at Jay Gardner over there on the side, former cat. Yeah. The cadet flat-out ball, Coach Roy, Foyce. Um, I, I think, I think. look, they've been, they're not going to say it, but they've been preparing for that Duke game, just like Duke's preparing for this summer. They looked at him this summer. They know what's going on, and they know how high a profile game. I think every Arizona guy knows it. Champion had his chance from outside. No good. Morgan stayed under a minute left, rushing it down the floor. That was Oliver that had some cool intentions as he's fouled on his dunk attempt. Will Mana, another Tucson kid, Foothills High School. Catalina Foothills. I go back to Matt, the fact that Arizona against this. Morgan State team that did such a great job forcing turnovers last year. They just have seven turnovers with 25 assists. Yeah, I, that's a different players on the floor. This is not your starting five handling the ball the whole game. You've gone through essentially your whole roster and just turned it over seven times. Tommy said after the last exhibition, I wanted to tighten it up, and they they not only hurt them, they tightened it up is a lot better to your point than I would have thought they were. Under 40 seconds left. Probably one more offensive set here for the Wildcats. A chance for some of the reserves to polish things up. Martinez, cross-court pass, sails it to Morauskas. Champion wide open. Tapped around, still alive. They're trying to find Champion. Here's Morauskas. He nails the three. So Arizona puts up 122 points. Uh, that's the culture right there because Martinez could have shot it trying to find somebody else and keep doing that That's contagious Deep three from Oliver. No good and that'll do it Arizona Offense not an issue 122 points Pristine ball protection just seven turnovers for Tommy Lloyd and company passed out the game once again our final score 122 to 59